This is the first red I'm trying, the Liante. Good now, blend, the Maru 100% Negro Amaro grape. Now when wine tasting, you always gotta have your nibbles, little food in your belly, so that way between each sip of wine, cleansing the palate, and you're not getting too drunk. Now you guys are in for a treat today because in this unassuming place, just about 30 minutes from Bari in Puglia is the Cantina di Ruvo, Chirufo. I think I'm pronouncing it wrongly, but you'll check it out soon. We're gonna go wine tasting today. I'm gonna take you to three different places to taste wine in Puglia and just have a good time because why not? When you're down here in Puglia, they make some excellent wines and this is one of the spots right here. Look, I'm lucky to be in here today. They opened it up just to the public recently after coronavirus and we're gonna get busy. We're starting off easy with the rosé or we'll check it out right here. Moving on to Nero di Troia. Now this cooperative here works with 400 different wine producers in the region of Puglia. It's amazing, we're tasting them all today. Now it's time for Primitivo. This thing is 14% and it's a pretty strong one, especially as I'm here tasting it before lunch. Luckily they've given us little nibbles to eat, so during this wine tasting I'm not totally drunk because we have two more to go after this. This place is fantastic. It's low key, but they give you a great description of what all these wines are. The Primitivo, the Nero di Troia, and of course that Rosato, delicious. Now we're getting a, a handle on this bottle here. It's 1.2 kilograms, it's a heavy bottle, but it's an important bottle and they also have an important wine cork for it. The whole thing's special, this is the Reserva. Okay, now we're on to the next wine tasting, the second of three locations today. Always here in Puglia, always around Bari, and I'll put the map locations to all these vineyards and all these places to taste wine down in the description below, so check them out. The expected drive time is one and one minute. After all that wine, I needed a quick coffee. Now I'm good to go. The last place produces around 30 million bottles a year. This place produces around maybe 300,000 bottles a year. So much smaller place, and it's said to have the best Primitivo in Puglia. And we're gonna get to the heart of that matter soon. We're gonna taste our way through it. Now you probably can't see here, but this truck is loaded with grapes and over there they're processing them. You see the big vats there. This is where all the magic happens. Smaller place so we're getting a much better look of how the whole process happens here. This is all the stuff that goes into making wine, the back scenes. And over here we're gonna get to the tasting. We get a better understanding of how it all comes into place for this Primitivo. Now we're here at the winery Polvanera. They have the best Primitivo. Rosé and red wines. Starting off with this Rosé Primitivo here, nice and light. It's only 12, only 12 degrees. Uh, so, sort of heavy actually. First white of the day. This is a very small grape around here. How many hectares? 150 hectare acres. You'll have to do the translation into acres, what that is. This, I was wrong before, this place produces around 1 million bottles a year of wine. He's gonna correct me if I'm wrong. He, no he nods yes, I'm right. It's light and easy. But again, 12 degrees of alcohol, 12% alcohol. Okay, this wine? is that orange wine. It's made with the Verdecca grapes. To be honest, it's not the one I prefer. I'm waiting for the reds. Here they are. Soon, these are gonna be in the glass and be in my mouth. I'm gonna try these guys out. 14%, 100% Primitivo. Oh. Now this is the Polvanera 16, the Sedici. We're just getting told that this is the most indicative of what the vineyard produces. Remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. All their wines are high in alcohol, this one, is smooth so you can continue to drink it. But a 16 degrees, 16% 16 alcohol. This is the last one, number 17, and it's aged for two years in the stainless steel containers there, then about a year in the bottle, year or two in the bottles. Dici Sete, that means 17% alcohol, it's strong. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the mother load. Look at this. 
This is the cave where they have all the good wines down there. They're all aging down there. You got them here, these big magnums. Oh, 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 look at the dust. You know it's good when it's got that dust on top of it. We're getting down here, Johnny's explaining it all. And down there they have their first bottle ever produced. When was your first bottle produced? 2005. 2005 and they got it right down there. Johnny, we're gonna open it and drink it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course. There it is. 17% of alcohol. 2005. You can smell the, the dust, the mildew down here, but this is where wine ages and becomes the best. So we got some wine to take home with us. This should do four bottles of the good stuff. Here we go. Well, there's been an update. We're gonna have to save that third wine tasting for tomorrow morning. We just arrived here at the Castello Monaci. You're gonna love this place. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna wake up here and do some wine tasting. Tonight, we're gonna crash here. We're gonna have a nice evening meal and probably have some wine with that as well. But now we're just gonna chill out and relax. Look at this place, it's amazing. I wish we would've gotten here just a little bit sooner to get the that. sunset photos, but oh. There must be some event tonight. I hear some music over there. Oh, we found ourselves in the middle of an Italian wedding. Look at all the food. Maybe I should be a wedding crasher. All right, we have our own private dinner up this way in this amazing castle. We're gonna dive into some of this food now. No wedding crashing for me tonight. <laughs> All right, so we went with the wine pairing menu. 70 euros here at the castle, and that's a good bargain. Every plate has its own wine that comes with it. So they're gonna bring us one plate after another, each with its own glass of wine. It's a marathon of a dinner, and it's beginning now. Had some time to reflect on that dinner last night. Great dinner, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it. The surroundings, spectacular. Really loved the location inside that castle. However, I thought that the plates were too large. They could have done smaller little individual plates and there was no explanations on the wines that were served with each plate and no explanations of the food themselves. The waiter just didn't seem to be into his job that night. Maybe it was an off night for him. We can excuse him for that. So those are the only negative points to an otherwise great dinner. Now, after I get out of bed, we're gonna do that wine tasting, that third of three wine tasting. A quick note on visiting Puglia. Just like anywhere in the world, if you go in off season, you're gonna get the better bargains. And that's what we did here. We're in the second week of October. Typically in these areas of Italy, July, August, those are the peak seasons. There are gonna be many tourists and the prices are gonna be higher. Come down here in the off season in the spring or as we're doing here after the summer, the prices are lower, there are less people and you're gonna have a great time. Look at this magical place right here. These are the grounds of the Castello. And this morning, before we get into that wine tasting, we're gonna get into that third and final wine tasting. I promise we're gonna get there. We're getting a little tour of this castle and the surroundings to understand a little bit of its history and how the wine production came here to body, to this little region in Puglia. Marco's brought us up here to the top of the cantina so we can get a good look at all the vineyards back here behind me, 500 acres of vineyards. They produce all the local wines here and around three million bottles a year come from Castello Monaci and I promise we're gonna get to drinking soon. Oh, I'm loving it already. You can smell the wine coming together down here. All these leaders and leaders, they will go into the bottles and they will be on the wine on your table. Now we're gonna go downstairs and see the barrels where all the good red wines are aged and they come to life just down this way. This is the magical place right here red lights, red wine, wooden barrels, all that stuff that makes the magical Castello Monaci wine. And we're gonna taste it soon. Marco, we're gonna taste the wine soon? All right, we're gonna get on to the wine tasting. This is the first red I'm trying, the Liante. Now, it's, it's a mix of their vineyards from the Negro Maro to the Malvasia vineyards. Good blend. The Maru, 100% Negro Amaro grapes. I'm liking this one better than the Liante. Now when wine tasting, you always gotta have your nibbles and they have them here. Little food in your belly, so that way between each sip of wine, cleansing the palate 
and you're not getting too drunk. Okay, I'm heading back in there, just out there shooting some thumbnails for this video. Now, if I had to rank these three vineyards I've been to, number one would be this place because you could taste wine, you can sleep here on the premises, and it's a cool place to sleep, and is the area is so beautiful. Number two would be that second vineyard we visited because it's a family-run operation. You get the real sense of how they made it. You see all the love they put into their wines. And number three would be the first one, the cooperative, because it's more of a business and it doesn't have that kind of Italian wine sensation that you want when you're out wine tasting, but still, it's good wine. Now let's get back into the tasting. I'm onto the Primitivo now. It's 14% alcohol, good tasting, but I know what I'm waiting for. It's the Ayache, the Reserva. Now this is two years in the barrel. And like the Liante, it's 25% Malvasia and another 75% Negro Amaro grapes. Tastes pretty good. Now that's it, that's all the wine tasting. We hit one, two, three vineyards and tasted some great wine out there. I'm gonna put all the links to all three of those vineyards down in the description below so you can check those vineyards out. Do some wine tastings when you're down here in the Bari area. It's very simple and very easy to do. And these vineyards are happy to have you, especially in the off season when they don't have many guests and the prices are low, it's the excellent time to come and visit. Now you probably shouldn't do that, but we just stopped the car and, and got a few grapes. Here they are right here, Primitivo grapes, I can just assume, but it's after the harvest and these are the grapes that have remained. Don't get caught, get out and get some of these grapes. Taste them too, they're sweet. And you really get to see up close and firsthand what it's all like, what these grapes are all like down here in Puglia. Just like that, and they're good. Thank <laughs> you.